Greetings, Rob Chastner here. Um, this is the final study and video um, on the book of Hosea, the prophet Hosea. And we're going to uh, finish up here in chapter nine. So if you're following along uh, with your Bibles, open up to Hosea chapter nine. We'll start with verses one, two, and three, which says, Rejoice not, O Israel, for joy as other people for thou hast gone a whoring from thy God. Now remember, when Hosea speaks of whore or whoredom or prostitution, it's re referencing not sexual matters, although uh, Hosea's wife was uh, representing that, but what God is teaching us here is spiritual whoredom or spiritual prostitution, uh, spiritual adultery. All right, so, uh, for thou hast gone a whoring from thy God, thou hast loved a reward upon every corn floor, the floor of, and the wine press shall not feed them, and the new wine shall fail in her. They shall not dwell in the Lord's land, but Ephraim shall return to Egypt, and they shall eat unclean things in Assyria. So instead of going to God for help, uh, instead of going back in repentance and asking God to restore them and to restore the, uh, become a place of blessing, what did they do? They went to the Gentile nations. They went up to the Assyrians. They went up to, uh, they went down to Egypt and they said, we need help rather than going to God. Um, all right. Chapter nine, verse four. They shall not offer wine offerings to the Lord. They shall uh, neither shall they be pleasing unto him. Their sacrifices shall be unto them as the bread of mourners. <clears throat> All they eat thereof shall be polluted, for their bread for their soul shall not come into the house of the Lord. So there is a place we can see uh, this reference um uh, now to a grapevine, uh, which is down in verse 16. Uh, we have Ephraim, uh, northern ten tribes. Uh, in verse 16 and 17a, it says, Ephraim is smitten um, with idolatry, of course. Their root is dried up uh, so far as their worship uh, in God, Jehovah. Uh, they shall bear no fruit, yea, though... Uh, they bring forth, yet will I slay even the beloved fruit of their womb. In other words, their children, my God will cast them away. Let's look in the Gospel of John in chapter 15. Um, um, and uh, uh, the vine and the branches, you all understand and know that if you've studied the New Testament. Um during the Lord's earthly ministry, and he's speaking, remember, whatever Jesus spoke, it was to the Jews. It was to the Jewish people. Verse 15, verses, sorry, John 15, verses 1 and 2, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, or prunes it, as we call it today, that it may bring forth more fruit. In other words, we're speaking in uh, agricultural or agrarian uh, terminology regarding grape, uh, grape vineyards. Uh, verses three and four in John 15 says, now, you, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now, of course, he's talking to the 12, uh, to, uh, the 12 tribes of Israel, but... Um, uh, uh, sorry, he's not talking to the to the twelve apostles in particular. He's talking to the nation of Israel. Um, now, in verse four, here comes the promise. Number four in John fifteen, it says, "Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch um, cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, ye except ye abide in me. So uh, it's no different for us 
as a believer in Paul's teachings, we are members of the body of Christ, the body of the Messiah. Uh, as much, uh, and as such, we, we feed on the head. Uh, so we feed on the word of God. Uh, and as soon as we re- lose that relationship, we become uh, worthless. Uh, John 5, 15, 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches, and he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. Now, here we come from one level of bearing to another. We go from bearing fruit to bearing much fruit. Now, verse 5 continues to say, for without me, you can do nothing. Verse 6, if I, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and it and is withered. And of course, a withered branch doesn't produce any fruit. Uh, and men gather them and cast them off to fire. They are burnt. All right, so now uh, this is not speaking of someone saved and lost uh, and needs to be re- resaved. That, that's not the case. Uh, this is a reference to the 12 as members of the nation of Israel, and they're placing their trust in him, in Jesus as the Redeemer, their Messiah, the Son of God, and all the rest of it. Uh, And without a relationship with Jesus Christ, without a relationship with Yeshua HaMashiach, um, uh, they were as nothing. Uh, That was, again, the vast majority of the Jews in Jesus Christ's day in the first century. It was only a small a percentage who truly believed who he was, a very small percentage. They call it a remnant all throughout the Old Testament, a remnant. And uh, the vast majority of Israel just continued on their religious and ritual uh, lifestyle. Uh, But for those few, this was their relationship, like a vine and a branch and the fruit. John 15, 7 goes on to say, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask and you will uh, what you will, and it shall be done unto you. <clears throat> now, that's the promise that was intrinsic to all of Israel, all who lived their lives governed by God. When they would come into the kingdom, uh, they, there would be uh, no such thing as unanswered prayer um, because you do not pray and get everything that you pray for, um, <clears throat> if you do, um, uh, I've never heard heard of that. God, God always delivers on his promises. Um, but these people uh, had that because they were in view of the earthly kingdom over which Christ would rule and reign. Satan would be off the scene. That's the whole different scenario that what we're in today but nevertheless, we can, just as the Old Testament gleaned from this. All right, John 15, verses 8 and 9 say, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. Um, in other words, not be average, but you bear much fruit. So, uh, so shall ye be my disciples, as the Father hath loved me, as, I have, lo- as, as have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Uh, um now, verse 10, if you if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. <clears throat> but the point I wanted to show was Israel was like a grapevine whose branches withered. Uh, there was no fruit. Uh, you know, and this is true today. If you are... Uh, uh, worshiping and following uh, and believing in the Messiah, uh, then your life will naturally show fruit, uh, show advancements for the kingdom of God. All right, now we're going back to um, Hosea chapter 9, uh, the last couple of verses, and then we'll conclude on this uh, uh, the study of Hosea. Uh, Verse 6, for lo, they they are gone because of destruction. Egypt shall gather them up. Okay, so they're going to run to Egypt for help, but Egypt will come become their adversary. Uh, Memphis shall burn them. So that's a city in Egypt. Uh, the pleasant places for their silver 
nettles shall possess them, uh, thorns shall be in their tabernacles. In other words, it's not blessings. It, uh, it's what Deuteronomy calls curses. You can look at Deuteronomy uh, chapter 28. It says blessings and curses. The first maybe 14 verses are if you do these things, then the, you'll get blessings. And then from, I think, 13, 14, 15 on to the rest of Deuteronomy 28, it says, and if you do these, you'll be curses. So obviously, Israel was doing things that would be cursing them. Uh, Deuteronomy 28. Back to verse 7. Uh, the days of the visitation are come and the days of recompense are come. Israel shall know it. The prophet is a fool. The spiritual man is, man is mad. Now, don't forget, remember, if you've studied the, the book of Isaiah and uh, I have um, uh, I'm in the process of putting verse by verse the book of Isaiah. Uh, there's 66 chapters in that uh, book. I've got about half up at this point. Um, and the rest will be up uh, in the months to come. But if you've studied um, the book of Isaiah, it reveals that there are three distinct times of judgment and blessings in Israel's future. When Isaiah was writing, the first one was coming. It was the Babylonian invasion. They would take, uh, they would be taken out for 70 years. You remember God told the Jews to rest the land every seventh year. Uh, and they didn't for 490 years. And so God uh, used the Babylonians as a rod and a staff to, to uh, as a punishment or to, to guide his people to take them out for 70 years into captivity so that the land could rest. When God says to do something, whether you agree or disagree, he's still going to get the job done. All right. So the second great judgment uh, was in 70 AD when Titus and his legions came in and destroyed Jerusalem uh, and the temple, and the Jews were scattered uh, into every nation. Um, now we've seen them come back uh, the last hundred years. Uh, they're back in the land, and of course Israel became a state and it was enacted in 1947 and, and put into effect in 1948, so it's been nearly a full generation now. Uh, they're back in the land, and everything is getting ready for the next great judgment, the seven-year tribulation, uh, which we looked at uh, a while back in a different study. But following the tribulation, what happens? You have the glory of the kingdom of heaven on earth. Uh, that will begin during the fall festivals that you'll find in Leviticus 23. That would be the Jewish New Year, where you have the it's called Yom Teruah, the blasting of the ram's horn. Why do they blast the ram's horn? They blast it to announce the arrival of the king. They also blast it in different cadence for the arrival of the uh, bridegroom coming to collect his bride. And then, of course, you have the day of judgment on Yom Kippur. And then the glory of the kingdom of heaven on earth begins during the Feast of Tabernacles on the 15th day of the seventh month on the Hebrew calendar, which is the beginning of the millennium, the thousand year reign of the Messiah. And uh, that's going to be a, a, the glorious, glorious time. All right. So hopefully this has been a helpful and informative uh, study of, uh, of Hosea. Uh, thank you for viewing and uh, amen.